mighty name. We thank you for joining us today. Hallelujah. This is the Heart of David International Ministry. I'm the pastor, Dr. Mark Dean. It is Saturday, June 17th. Hallelujah. 10 a.m. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. We do ask that you like, subscribe, and share on YouTube, on Facebook, and Twitter. That is the Heart of David International Ministry. Like, subscribe, and share. Our website is hodim.org. Hodim.org. If you want prayer, we're here to pray for you. Hallelujah. If you if you need some counseling, we have, we're here to help you with that. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. If we cannot help you, we will find somebody that can assist you. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Our subject today, glory to God. Hallelujah. We're coming out of Samuel. 1 Samuel 15 and 22. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel chapter 15 and 22. Our subject today is obey. It's better to obey than to sacrifice. Obedience is everything to God. If you don't obey God, how is he going to answer your prayers? Uh, I learned that I found out that there's a lot of people, hallelujah, that said God didn't answer my prayers. But understand something. You have to be obedient to God. Because he said it's better to obey than to sacrifice. People have gone on fast. Three-day fast, two-day fast, ten-day fast. They've been on Daniel fast. And you're wondering why you didn't get a breakthrough. It is because you have to come down to obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Hallelujah. I said obedience is better than sacrifice. Hallelujah. If you have obedience, hallelujah, it increases your faith because remember the Bible tells you without faith it is impossible to believe God. It is impossible to please God. So in order to build your faith, hallelujah, you have to be obedient. You can't say I have faith in God and you're not obedient in God. She obedience and faith, they work together. Maybe we should call them triplets. Obedience, faith, and believe. Obedience. Hallelujah. When you're obedient to God and you're praying to God in, in faith, you know God is going to do it because you have been obedient. Hallelujah. And that brings your faith because I have been obedient. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. I know God is answering my prayers. I'm obedient to God because I love God. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. You're obedient to Christ Jesus because you love Christ Jesus. You want to have a heart for God. And in order to have a heart for God, or even having a heart like David. Hallelujah. David did his best to be obedient. And we as saints need to do our best to be obedient. He tells you in 1 Samuel 15 and 22, he said, let's read it. And Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice? As in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat, hearken than the fat of rams. See right here, when Samuel is talking to Saul, Saul was supposed to go down and destroy everything. 
He was supposed to wipe out uh, the Amalekites, which he did not. God told him, go down there and you destroy everything. You destroy every man, woman, and child. You destroy every animal. You burn everything to the ground. Glory to God. Saul didn't do that. Saul got in his flesh. Hallelujah. Maybe his men talked him into it. I don't know. But when, talk, when, when, when Saul's army took over the Amalekites, instead of him killing the king, which he was commanded to do uh, from God, he, uh, he left the king alive. Back then, it was a great prize <clears throat> to have captured another king from another kingdom. But Saul was supposed to kill everything, every man, every woman, every child, every animal, every living thing in that kingdom. Hallelujah. He did not do it. Hey, glory to God. Mm. Glory, glory, glory. Mm. Let's read... Uh, Let's go to verse 17. 1 Samuel 15 and 17. And the Lord, I'm sorry. And Samuel said, When thou was little in thine sight, was thou not made the head of the tribe of tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Fight against them until they be consumed. He is supposed to destroy the Amalekites. The, look, God said, he called them sinners, and he called them by name. He said, sinners, the Amalekites and fight against them until they be consumed. When you consume something, you make sure that there's nothing left. There's no residue of anything. Let's go to verse 19. Wherefore then did it, wherefore then did it thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but did it fly upon the spoils and did it evil in the sight of the Lord? Hallelujah. Verse 20. And Samuel said, and Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agai the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. So Saul is saying, I did everything that the Lord told me to. He said, I got Amalek the king of the Amalekites. I mean, Agag, Agag, the king of the Amalekites. He said, I destroyed all of them. Let's go to verse 21. Hallelujah. He said, but the people took up the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord God in Gilgag. So he got another other problem. <clears throat> the people took up the spoil. They took sheep. They took oxen. The sheep, the the chef of the things which should have been offered, which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgag. So instead of Saul and his army destroyed everything, glory to your mighty name, he decided to keep the stuff that they can use. We're going to keep the sheep and the oxen. Hallelujah. We're going to keep the, uh, 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 the eggs or the chickens. Glory to God. We're going to keep the goats. And that is not what God told him. 
God said utterly destroy everything of the Amalekites. That means the king Agag. He did not do that. Hallelujah. Let us keep reading. Let's go to verse 22. And Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellious is as the sin of of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou has rejected the word of the Lord he has also rejected thee from being king now let's get something straight Saul said I did everything God told me to do Samuel now Samuel is, is, is Saul's prophet and Samuel told David, I mean, told uh, Saul exactly what to do. Hallelujah. He did not do it. He was supposed to kill the king. He didn't do it. He was supposed to kill every person, man, woman, and child. He didn't do it. He was supposed to kill every animal. He did not do it. But yet he is saying, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. See, and, and that's what's coming up today. Hallelujah. It's, what's coming up today is people are being deceived. They think that they're doing good. They think that they're doing God's will. When they are blatantly going against the word of God. Again, I'm going to mention it. This is what they call Pride Month. Pride Month is... Month is an abomination unto God. It's an abomination. It is, it is vile and disgusting to God. So whenever somebody's talking about uh, Pride Month, but yet you want to talk about the love of God, you are being disobedient. You're saying, God loves me. God understands. And, and this is what I did. And God is saying, no, I didn't tell you to do that. The same thing he is telling Saul. I didn't tell you to do that. What I told you to do was, the, the, was to destroy everything. Was to destroy everything in the camp. You didn't do it. The king Agag is still alive. And why do I hear all these animals? They were supposed to be destroyed as well. Glory to God. And Saul thinking he doing a good thing thinking he obeying the voice of the Lord. And he did not. He thought he was obeying. He said, yeah, I obeyed him. Samuel said, no, you didn't. Because you were supposed to destroy everything in the camp. Everything in the kingdom of the Amalekites are, is supposed to be destroyed. It's supposed to be consumed. There should be nothing left of the Amalekites. Hallelujah. But Saul decided to keep the king alive. He decided to keep some of the animals. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's read glory to God. Verse 23, we're going to read down. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as the sin of is as iniquity and idolatry because thou has rejected the word of the Lord. Mm. He has also rejected thee from being king. Hallelujah. And Samuel said, and Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy, and thy words because I feared the people and obeyed they both. Uh, their voice. Here go another thing. Scoot that back a little bit. You can't be scared. No. What you want, yeah. You cannot be scared of what the people say when God has told you something. 
this right here because Saul said, I, I, uh, I, I feared the people. I, I listened to the people. And therefore, Saul, because you listened to the people and not the voice of God, God has rejected you. See, here's the other thing. Evil influences. And then you have peer pressure. And Saul, you are the king. And you don't believe that Samuel, well, you believe that Samuel is a prophet, but you decided to believe your army over the man of God. Samuel have been proven over and over and over again that he hears directly from God. But you decide to listen to the people more than the prophet that God put in your life. You decide to listen to the people more than the pastor that God has put in your life. Again, let me make this disclaimer. I'm not talking about somebody hypocrite and half-stepping and they just want to make a lot of money and they just want to use their congregation as their own personal concubine and they want to steal and rob people. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about somebody that's real, somebody who got a relationship with God, somebody who fasts and prays, somebody who seeks the Lord. Samuel messed up because he listened to the people. But the problem with him listening to the people, he already got instruction, hallelujah, on what he was supposed to do. Mm, glory to God. Let's read verse 24 again. 1 Samuel 15 and 24. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and, and thy words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. One thing you got to understand, being in ministry, you can't worry about what people are telling you a lot. You go to God and see what God tells you. Don't get me wrong. God said there's safety in a multitude of counselors. You better make sure the multitude of counselors that you in that they got a, that they're uh, they got a relationship with Christ. You don't listen to your congregation about what you should preach, and that offended me when you preach that. You don't do that. You give them what God gave you to give them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God does everything in decency and in order. We know that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 25. Now, therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, my God. And the Lord has rejected thee from being king over Israel. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle, and he rent it. And it rent. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord has rent the kingdom of Israel from, from thee this day, and has given it to, to thy neighbor of thine. That that is better than mm, glory to God. That is better than thou. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent. For he is not a man that he should repent. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people and before Israel. And turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord thy God. And Samuel turned again after Saul, and, and Saul worshiped the Lord. Then said Samuel, bring ye hither to me Agag, the king of the Amalekite. 
And Agag came unto him delicately. And Agag said, surely the bitterness of death is past. And Samuel said, as thy sword has made women childless. Hey, glory to God. So shall thy mother be childless among women. And Samuel honed Hone Agag, hack, hone Agag in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. So what Samuel did, and they said, Samuel prophet, he killed the king, he killed Agag, and he did it. But listen, Saul was supposed to do it. Saul was not obedient to God. See, my God, help me today, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. It's better to obey than to sacrifice. God told him to do that for a reason. Glory to God. And if you keep reading about the Amalekites, it was the Amalekite who tried to kill Esther and the Jews. They weren't even supposed to be on earth. But Saul didn't do what God told him to do. And then it comes up a few years later. Mm, glory to God. So obedience is better than sacrifice. So let's go to, uh, we're going to go to Matthew 6 and 46. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, Luke. Luke 6 and 46. It says this. Ooh. Here we go. Luke 6 and 46 says this. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and you do not the things which I say? See, that is, comes down to obedience. Don't call me your Lord, and you are disobedient to me. Don't call me Lord, and you don't want to do what I say. Luke 6 and 46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why are you calling me Lord if you're not doing the things that I say? I say it all the time. You ain't even trying to do what I say. Hallelujah. Verse 47. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my saying and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. Hmm. I'm going to show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built his house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the floods arose, whoo, the streams beat vermintly upon the house and could not shake it. For it was founded upon a rock. Obedience allows you to be founded upon a rock. Obedience allows you to be strong. Your foundation is in that rock. Your foundation is steadfast. It's unmovable. It's always abounding. You are, your foundation is upon a rock that built deep. So when the wind and the waves come, glory to God, you will be able to stand the wind and the waves. But it comes down to obedience. Obedience will help you. Obedience built your faith. Faith built your obedience. Don't call me Lord, Lord, and you do not the things that I say. You got people up in church today. Even preachers, they're not doing what the Lord say. They are not obedient. They are not trying to be obedient. They try to come up with their own doctrine. 
They preaching lies. They preaching heresy. You're not going to make everybody happy no matter what. They don't like you preaching on sin. They don't want you to preach on adultery. They don't want you to preach on fornication. And now they don't even want you to say Jesus. They don't want you to say God. They don't want you to say the blood of Jesus. They don't want you preaching on abomination. They don't want you preaching on homosexuality and bestiality. Something's wrong. Too many people got itchy ears. Obey is better than sacrifice. It is better that you obey the word than the sacrifice. Yes, you've been on fast. Yes, you've been on consecration. Yes, you have sacrificed certain things. But the question is, are you obedient to the word of God? Are you obedient to the word? Because if you're obedient to the word of God, that builds up your faith. And we all know without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's why you have no faith in your prayer. You have no faith in your prophecy. You have no faith in the word of knowledge that somebody has given you because you have not been obedient. And when you are not be obedient, you wonder why stuff is not happening because you're not obedient. And when you're not obedient, it shakes your faith. How can you say you have faith and you're not obedient to the word of God? We just told you. Luke 6 and 46, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and you do not the thing that I say? You can tell me, Pastor, we all sin and come short of the glory of God. I understand that that's Bible, but he told you to be obedient to the best of your ability. Stop making an excuse why you messed up and because of this, and God is merciful. He is a merciful God, but understand something. If you commit too much sin, you can be separated from him. You don't believe me? Go to Isaiah 59. He said, your sins have separated you. It's not that I can't hear. It's not that my hand is not shortened. But your sin and iniquity has separated between you and your God. Let's go there real quick. Hallelujah. Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59 and 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sin has hid his face from you that he will not hear. See, God hid his face from sin. I keep telling you, sin can't dwell in the presence of God. It can't dwell in holiness. It cannot dwell in the presence of God. Your sins have hid his face because he is not going to look at the sin. You're committing sin, and you're committing sin to where it's not that his hand is not shortened. It's not that he can't hear you. It's your sin that you refuse to get out. That's what it is. You refuse to get out of your sin. You refuse to fight that temptation. That's why you have separated you between you and God, the separation. Hallelujah. You're running to iniquity. You're running to sin. You're justifying it. What is the problem? How is that being obedient to God? And yes, you in church every service. But you're not being obedient to the word of God. Obedience is better than sacrifice. 
Obedience build up your faith in God. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. But you got to be obedient to him. You got to be obedient when don't nobody when ain't nobody else is uh, obedient. Somebody told me, well, I know the Bible say, but you know, I, I don't know about that. Yeah, well, that's the problem. I heard somebody tell say something one day. I know the I know the Bible say if you love your children more than me, you're not worthy. That I'm sorry, Lord, I, I ain't giving up my children for nobody. That's being disobedient. Because he told you in the word. I, I'm not telling you not to love your children. I'm not telling you not to help your children. But when you put anybody, any person, anything above God. Hallelujah. We got to get back to obedience. I'm talking about the church. I'm talking about the body of Christ at large. Hallelujah. We got so much civil war going on in the body of Christ. This denomination don't like this one. This one ain't right. This one ain't right. Listen, we got to come together. And yes, we do got to come together. No, we're not going to accept sin. Uh, look, I'm independent, but I do have somebody I answer to. I got two or three people that I answer to. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You got to be obedient to the word of God before you do anything, before you want to cast out devils, before you want to prophesy. It's all about obedience and it's about faith, faith and obedience. Hallelujah. You won't have no faith because you don't have no obedience. Well, the Lord ain't home, heard my prayer where well, you ain't done nothing. He ever, you ain't done nothing, nothing that he told you. You're not obedient to God. You're still doing what you want to do. You got people in church, boyfriending and girlfriending, been together two years. They ain't, ain't even thinking about been, be getting married. Been together five years, been together 10 years and 20 years, talking about we common law. Common law ain't the word of God. Common law ain't Bible. You go down there to the justice of the peace and you get a preacher that's going to marry you. And nowadays, we got to be specific according to the Bible. Get married according to the Bible. That is a man and a woman, not two women, not two men, not some man who say he had a sex change and he a woman now. That is an abomination. That is wickedness. That is perversion. Hallelujah. People, somebody said, well, you act like you perfect. I didn't tell you I was perfect. But what I did tell you is that I'm saved. What I did tell you that I strive for perfection. What I did tell you, if I missed the mark, I'm quick to say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. Lord Jesus, give me another chance. Hallelujah. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience brings your Faith, you get you get more faith, you get more power in God. Obedience allowed you, my God, more more favor with God. More favor, more faith. Faith and obedience in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Satan, I rebuke you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every hindering spirit, every lying spirit, every disobedient spirit, I cast you out right now in the mighty name of Jesus. You'll not stop this service. You'll not stop this word. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost, fire come against you right now. Fire. Holy Ghost, fire. We come against every evil altar. In the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost, fire come against you right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, fire. Lord, thank you for sending your angels, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah for giving us an ear to hear, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for putting the obedience down on the inside of us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us faith, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, faith, Lord. 
Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. I'm holding on to every word that you told me. In the name of Jesus Christ, it's called obedience. How can you want everything and want God to do everything for you and you're not obedient to his word? You ain't trying to be obedient to his word. You got an excuse every time you go do what you want to do. Sometimes it's just good to fall down to the mercies of God. Lord, I'm wrong. Lord, I messed up. Lord Jesus Christ, give me one more chance, Lord. Give me the spirit to be obedient, the strength to be obedient. Give me the faith that I need, Lord. That man came to Jesus and he said, Lord, I believe but help now thou my unbelief. Glory to God. I want to go into the straight gate. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way. We'll talk about that later. Hallelujah. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience brings your faith. Faith brings obedience. Your prayer, you got faith in them because you've been obedient. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. I said glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Let's go back up to uh, Matthew chapter 7. Hallelujah. Let me go ahead and read this, and we're, this is going to be the last scripture we're we'll talking about it. I'll expand on it a little bit later. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go therein. So we want to enter into the straight gate. Straight is the gate. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I thank you for joining us today. Hallelujah. We will be back tonight. Glory to God for our night service. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Before I go, I want to know, are you saved? Have you given your life to Christ? And maybe you're in a backslidden person. Uh, maybe you're in a black backslidden state. Some people call it out of fellowship. If you are in a backslidden state, this is the time for you. Hallelujah. To come back to Christ. Remember, Christ is waiting on you. Remember, Christ loves you. He wants you to repent. He got his arms open. One thing about repentance, repentance means that you're humble. You can't come to God with pride, talking about God, this is the way I am. You need to say, Lord, I come to you right now. I repent. I repent for everything that I've done, everything that I did, everything that I said. Jesus Christ, I am sorry. Now, I thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for me. I thank you for shedding your blood. I thank you for giving me another chance. Mm, glory to God. He, I believe, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Your confession is, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe that he rose on the third day. I believe that he took the sins of the world away. Your confession is I'm saved. Your confession is God is good. Your confession is, hallelujah, God is merciful. He has given me another chance. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. That's your confession. Confess it. Confession is part of your testimony. God is good. God saved me out of all the junk that I did. Out of everybody who I thought couldn't get saved, I didn't think he was going to save me. 
I thank the Lord for his grace and his mercy and his long suffering. Hallelujah! Amen. Glory be to God. We will see you tonight. Glory to your mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God bless you. Have a nice day. Amen. Amen.